You drive? Well, sure, most people drive. I wanna give you some best practices for buying a good pair of driving sunglasses, so stick around. Hello and welcome, I'm Eyeglass Tyler. I wanna to talk to you about driving sunglasses. It may seem like something that is kind of brainless, right? I just wanna get sunglasses, just give me sunglasses. Well, not always, there are definitely some better sunglasses for driving than others. And so I want to give you some kind of buying tips, some best practices for picking out the right pair for you. Of course, the things that you're going to want to consider for the frames would be fit. That's obvious. Also, how about grip? You want to make sure that they stay on your face. You want to make sure that they give you proper protection thanks to coverage. Uh, there are things you may not be aware of that are important, like frame material for longevity and durability. How about lenses? Do you do polarized? What kind of color options should you go with? There are definitely some things that I think I can help you to get you in the right headspace and move you in the right direction to get the ideal pair for you. The point of this video is that at the end of it, you will know everything you need to know about picking out your next pair of driving sunglasses. By the way, if I do a good job and you're ready to order something at the end of this, do not forget about our seat better guarantee because with that, you're never stuck with something that doesn't work for you or that you just don't like. You have as long as 45 days with them, even in prescription. And then you just call us. We take care of you no matter what that means on our end. Also, we have opticians. We have opticians who would love to help you get it right the first time. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. Use this as a resource. Let's get into this. Okay, let's start with frames. Let's talk about fit first and foremost. Obviously, that's super important. You want them to be comfortable. You want them to stay on your face. If you're buying in a brick and mortar store, this can be a little easier, of course, because you have a bunch of frames in front of you. You can try them on. You can figure out whether or not they fit you properly, but putting them on, this isn't always perfect though, because sometimes you can have them fit comfortably. They seem fine. And after wearing them for an hour, they're no longer comfortable. And so there's uh, some things to consider there, even if you're buying in store, but it's even tougher when you're buying online. Well, thanks to SporterX's SFW, if you don't know what that means, stands for SporterX Frame Width. It's actually a unique frame measurement that we measure for all of our frames to make sure that you have an ideal fit that is also very comfortable. If you want more information on that, we did a whole video explaining what that means and how to measure it. Uh, and we have all that information when we do our videos and you look at our reviews, uh, at least since we've done the SFW, we have all of that is included. So you always know when you're looking at frame reviews from us, what the SFW is. So you can have a better chance of getting an appropriate fit. Let's also talk about grip because yeah, they fit you well, but now they slide because there's not grip. Well, there are some key spots that you will find in good frames for this. Uh, that are going to keep it on your face a little bit better. So we're talking grip on the insides of the temples, maybe on the bottom of the temple where it's making contact with your head and the top of your ear, and also on the nose piece, on the nose bridge, the nose pad. Now, uh, there are lots of different materials out there. Again, this is something that we like to point out when we're doing frame reviews. Uh, different grip materials. There's of course rubbers, but then there are hydrophilic materials that grip even as you get a little sweaty, as it gets wet, it doesn't slide more, it actually grips better. Uh, so that's something to be aware of both on the nose and on the ears. Uh, another thing is coverage. Obviously you wanna make sure that you're getting proper coverage, proper protection. This doesn't always necessarily mean you have to get a wrapped frame. Some people don't like the cosmetics and the aesthetics of a more wrapped lens. It's a little bit too aggressive for them. They like something that's a little more lifestyle. And there are definitely some good options that will be very appropriate, excellent for driving that aren't that aggressively wrapped design, but you wanna have good coverage. What I call lens real estate. You wanna have a good amount of lens in front of your eye to protect and to control light, making it through the lenses. Also material. Well, this can be a big deal. Uh, there are definitely things to be aware of. Uh, I don't know that there's anybody that really considers material as a be all end all, but plastic materials tend to be lighter weight. Metal materials can be a little bit heavier uh, and they can be a little more prone to breaking because of the all the, the solder points on them. They can get weak, especially if they get bent. You know, when you when you mess with metal, if you bend it one way and then you bend it back, you've weakened the metal. So that's something to be aware of. Plastic tends to be lighter and a little bit more durable. Uh, and there are some plastic materials that if you leave them in the car can actually do worse. They aren't gonna, they're not gonna fare as well. Obviously a metal frame isn't gonna break down if you leave them in the car. I do not ever recommend that you leave your glasses in the car, of course. I'm sure that that's a message that is 
across the board from everyone that's selling glasses, uh, but it is a bad idea because it will break down the frame. It'll also be bad for the lenses, uh, but frame material is important. And again, something that we like to include when we do our frame reviews. So check those out. Hey, if you're liking this content, but maybe you have additional questions about driving sunglasses or maybe you have prescription needs, well, be sure to reach out to one of our very friendly expert Sporter X opticians because they're eagerly awaiting your call. And for even more driving frame reviews, unboxings, prescription driving content, check out our videos and our blogs. We'll put a link in the description below. Now let's talk about lenses. What should you get for lenses? Well, polarized or non-polarized, I think we've done about 800 videos on this, but just a little quick overview. Polarized, the functionality of that, that feature is that it cuts glare bouncing off of other objects. It's a filter in the lens that cuts light bouncing off other objects like the asphalt or other vehicles or windshields or water. And so that can be a really good feature. And generally speaking, anytime somebody is asking for a good all around driving pair, I do point to polarized as being a good feature. Some things to be aware of with that is if you're in a snowy condition and you're worried about being able to discern ice from snow, the polarizing filter is gonna cut that glare so you're not gonna be able to see ice as well. Uh, other things where it can be an issue would be digital displays. This is an interesting one because for a long time, I've always said that the newer digital displays tend to be less problematic with polarizing filters. And so better cars tend to be less of an issue where this is concerned. However, now these luxury cars are coming out with these head up displays and these other crazy new kinds of displays and uh, they can actually be an issue. So you just need to be aware of the technology in your car and how that works with polarizing. As a general statement across the board, I usually recommend polarized because I think it's a good feature uh, just for the best protection, it cuts light that is generally not useful. There's not really a lot of use outside of the whole ice thing. There's not a lot of use uh, in glare bouncing off of other objects. When it comes to color, what should you do? Well, this is kind of up for debate. If we were talking some more sports specific options, I might have some recommendations. I would say that most people tend to like gray. It is neutral. It's going to give you true to world color perception. Uh, it's the most standard just across the board. If you pick up a pair of glasses off of the shelf somewhere, it's most likely they're going to be gray lenses. Uh, I personally really like contrast enhancement. One of my favorite lenses right now, uh, we have our own uh, frame, by the way, that's called the, we have two, but the one that works for me that is my favorite, it's called the Sporter X Coda. I love this frame. Uh, my favorite lens recently has been a brown with this rose gold mirror. It just looks beautiful. Some people think that they want true to world color perception, but I think it's nice when colors are boosted, when colors are, are, are more vivid. And it also helps with discerning the road conditions. You can spot and track potholes or variations in the train a little bit better thanks to that contrast enhancement. Uh, so browns, coppers, uh, even rose color lenses are actually really nice for driving. So there kind of is no wrong here, there's no wrong lens color to go with, just a matter of what you tend to prefer. Gray, I'd say, is the most popular. I really like contrast enhancement. I like the browns, I like the coppers. I even like rose. Definitely check those out if you've never tried them, because you might like them too. What about material? This can, I can answer this differently depending on what your needs are. If we're talking prescription, uh, polycarbonate's the most common. Polycarbonate is very lightweight. It's very readily available for all the different lens features, also very impact resistant and relatively thin. Uh, and it's honestly the lens material that's most common in, in off the shelf glasses as well, non-prescription. Uh, there are other options that a lot of people tend to prefer. This might be something to consider if you don't listen to anybody and you still do leave your lenses in the car uh, maybe check out glass. Glass is very durable. Glass doesn't flex uh, nearly as much or at all in extreme temperatures, whether it be heat or cold. And so they might last you a little longer. They're also the most scratch resistant lens material presently available. That's very tough to get in prescription. There are a few exceptions to that with Sporter X, only one, and that's Costa, that you can get glass prescription lenses. Uh, but there are a lot of different options. Again, not really any wrong answer here, unless optics is your most important element to your glasses. Glass is actually the most optically clear, the most optically precise. Uh, and so check out glass for that as well.
We're still talking about lenses and lens features. What about transitions? Okay, well, transitions is kind of a, a ball up in the air here because generally speaking, people when looking at transitions are expecting a lens that will go from clear to dark. And that doesn't exist, unfortunately. The reason why is because the majority of transitions out there are reacting to UV exposure. And so in the car, your windshields are treated with UV resistance so that UV light isn't making it through to activate the lenses. And so there is not any transitions lens that I'm aware of at least that will go from clear to a dark tint in the car behind a windshield. There are some alternative options you have, uh, like Transitions, by the way, is a brand. I don't know if you're aware of that. Transitions is a brand of the most popular brand of photochromic lenses. Photochromic is the most generic term for it. It just means it's light active, light reactive. It changes based on light transmission or UV in this case. Uh, there are some options that Transitions makes that do actually change in the car uh, a little bit or enough to make a difference. The one that is the most relevant is called driveware, but that doesn't get to a clear state. It goes from about a medium amber to a dark brown. Uh, and so it's always relatively dark, but it's good for wearing in overcast days. And then if it gets a little brighter, it's gonna get a little darker to protect your eyes a little bit better. And it will do that even behind a windshield. There is also, I'll just quickly mention, the Transitions Extra Active. That is a lens that when exposed to UV can go from a virtually clear state to a dark, even non UV exposure, it can get a little bit dark, but not nearly as dark, I think is what you are going to be looking for when you're driving. So uh, that's the mention on transitions or photochromic. What about gradient? Gradient is a feature, if you're unaware, where you have a darker lens up top and then it gets lighter as you go down the lens. So it's light, a light tint to even a clear state in the bottom of the lens, but it's a darker lens up top. There's not really a functional benefit to this. It, it could be nice because when you're driving and you're looking straight forward, you have that, that dark lens and then you can, without dipping your chin down, look through the bottom portion of the lens in the interior of your car where it's not as illuminated as full sun exposure and it'll be a little lighter. So there might be that element that you could benefit from, but overall, I think it's mostly a cosmetic thing uh, because it, it that's it, that's all it does for you. It's a little darker up top, a little lighter on the bottom. Uh, and so there are some other things as well, uh, like Maui Jim, for instance, they actually have a mirror lens that is gradient. So the, the mirror is gradient. And there are some interesting things about that, but you can check those videos out as well. We've done many. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say not a good idea if you're looking for a lens that cuts the most light transmission because you're going to get more light through that bottom portion of the lens than the top, which means more light to your eye in general. And so it's not gonna protect you as well against excessively sunny conditions. All right, now that we have gotten pretty exhaustive in all the information for what to look for in the frames, we have a couple of recommendations for you, just some uh, some frames that kind of hit on the points that I was recommending. This video is getting a little long. Thanks for sticking around. So the first one that I'm a big fan of is the Hoakipa. This is a Maui Jim frame, which I mentioned a little earlier when I was talking about the option for a gradient mirror. There are a few frames that are available with that. They also offer a cool function, which they call a bi-gradient mirror. And that's where it is actually a mirror coating on the bottom, a mirror coating on the top, and it progressively gets less intense as you get to the middle of the lens. The functionality behind that is they, they say it kind of squints for you, which is nice. It's blocking excess light coming in from the top, excess light coming in from the bottom, but it gives you a strip where you have uh, unaltered view because the mirror coating will also minimize light transmission, which by the way, you need to see when you're looking straight ahead. And so that's a nice feature that you can get. It really is an amazing lens technology, not to mention you will be also getting their Polarized Plus 2 Polarized technology. I mentioned that I usually recommend polarized. These are all polarized and their polarized tech is amazing. This is also an exceptionally lightweight frame. As you can see, there's like no frame to this guy. It's really just lens and temples and bridge. Especially if you get them in prescription, there isn't even that bar in the back. So very much the lowest profile frame you could ever get and immensely lightweight. Very, very cool frame. Uh, one of those things that I say, you put them on, you forget that they're even there. 
Next up, the Costa Rincon. This is very popular uh, and is actually a part of Costa's core collection, which means that this is not out of place on the boat either because of how durable it is, but we don't need to get too much into that. Again, lots of videos, you can check this out uh, for more details, but a really good all around style. This is not a wrap design, but you do have a huge amount of lens real estate. Uh, also very lightweight frame material. They use their TR90 nylon. Uh, so also very durable, very flexible, uh, and it maintains its shape. So again, I still don't recommend it, but this is going to fare a little better in a hot car than your typical cheap plastic will. Uh, we really like the Costa Rincon, one of our favorites here at Sporter X, uh, a little bit larger of a fit, but they even have a Rincon Cito for a little smaller of a fit, like for this guy. Next up, we can't be talking about driving sunglasses without talking about an aviator. This is my favorite aviator, the Randolph Engineering Aviator. That's actually the model name, Aviator. Uh, and they have actually in this, the bayonet temples, which I think is also a really cool feature that not only looks amazing with that retro styling, but also functions really well with keeping it on your head. You can see that slight wrap, uh, inward wrap to kind of hug the head from the back to keep them on your face. A really, really good, solid, classic American design. It doesn't have that same teardrop uh, shape as you might expect from your typical aviator, uh, like you would see on the, the, what was that show? Chips, California Highway Patrol with those heavily mirrored lenses. Uh, really, really classic style. I personally prefer this lens shape in an aviator. Maybe more appropriate to call it more of a navigator, but really, really solid style. I love this. Uh, and by the way, it won the best driving sunglasses of 2020 in our Rexy's awards, so definitely something that you might be seeing in 2021. Just really awesome frame. Don't miss out on this frame if you weren't aware of it and you like aviators because you'll probably get a lot of compliments on this one. That does it. I think I really exhaustively covered everything that you need to know about picking out driving sunglasses. I hope I hit on every topic because I, I talked for a long time. <laughs> Uh, I really hope this was helpful and maybe one of these frames sounds great to you. Don't forget about our See Better Guarantee because I really think it gives you a ton of peace of mind when you're ordering online uh, and hopefully your decision making for driving sunglasses has gotten a little simpler. Well, reach out to us if we can help any further because like I said, we have opticians who'd love to help you get it right the first time. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. If this was helpful, please give us a thumbs up because that helps us. You can find relevant videos over here and also we have good content on our social media outlets. I think you should check us out there too because I think you'd like it because it's good stuff and you can find us at SportRx. Mm -hmm.